Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. It is League Unlock. We are back. Eric and Mark here with you guys for the full preview extravaganza bonanza ahead of day one of the Swiss stage. Playing stage is the nice little appetizer, but this this is the real good good, the stuff that we've been waiting for. All the big teams finally hitting the rift. We thought play-ins was good, man. That's like looking into your Halloween bag and seeing one of those tiny little chocolate bars and be like, that's my favorite one. This was great. Oh, what a what a good treat. And then you see the oh, full king size? king size chocolate bar and baby, you're in business. And that is exactly what we got today with the play-in stage getting underway just shortly, just over 24 hours type of situation. Under 24 hours, we are just around the corner until we get into these play-ins and baby, we got some great matchups to kick this off. And let's start right with those day one matchups. Obviously, you don't even know what the day two matchups are going to be, which is the spice from this Swiss stage, as you can't even predict ahead until you see these first games and kicks off with maybe one of the more one sided ones. Gen G versus Gam. Can you paint me an angle where Levi and the boys get an upset? It's got to be creative. They got to find something again. Go back into the old timey playbook. Dust off some of those 2016, 2017 pages and find some of that dark technology to get on top of this Gen G team. I think the other big thing is going to be key, of course, is that bottom lane. Looking at how you stack up against Pace, it's going to be Slater on that side for Gam, who did step up against his you know, domestic rival in Artemis. But we got to be looking for a little bit more power if you're talking about Gen G. Yeah, tall ask. I think Gen G needs to be a little off their game for there to be uh, any upset chance for Gam. Then we get immediately to the fun stuff. NRG versus Weibo. Big Dokes versus the Shy. But I'm more looking at contracts running away with the jungle matchup. That's my angle for NRG to get an upset. I mean, it's crazy to say they're an upset against a fourth seed, but they are. And I got NRG getting it done, Mark. Doesn't matter. You're North America. You're up against it when you're looking at the international stage. I'll take any type of underdog angle we can get even as that number one seed. And yes, contracts in the jungle is that interesting option in this matchup head to head for Weibo where you feel like again things go right you look at how things were in the LCS I know we're not in the LCS anymore this is a different part of the woods I get it but you see that type of success you see that play style this is something that can cause issues for the Weibo gaming squad and looking what they're doing I'm going in the mid lane my man I'm talking about and he was just talking about it Xiaohu, paying some respect over to Palafox. I don't know if maybe just this is just the flowery scrims talk that it Called always Called him a exists. genius? He did, he did. He's been, he's buying into the Palafaker syndrome, my man. He's seeing some of that skill, some of that talent that helped push NRG to this number one spot in the very first place. But I don't think it's out of the question to be looking at NRG as having this option, having these chances and these viable outlets and options on how they want to attack the squad of Weibo game. I hope this isn't just a 300 IQ play from Xiaohu to get in Palafox's head. Like, <laughs> man, maybe I am a genius. Maybe I should go for this trick. Oh, Xiao. Xiaohu outsmarted us again. But uh, I'm going upset there. G2 versus D+, plus the other 1-4 matchup. But I think G2 is and should be way less of an underdog against D+, plus than NRG Weibo. It's going to be kind of swung a bit into the D-plus favor just because of the history of these two organizations against each other and people wanting to say, okay, well, I've seen these matchups. I've seen these players. I'm probably betting on Showmaker and Canyon, but that's forgetting just the differences between these two teams, the consistency that we have seen. And even if you want to go high, you know, high output to high output, G2, I think, still can edge out a squad like D-plus Kia at this point right now. You don't want to underestimate those two players that I just talked about, Showmaker, can you? You can throw in depth right in there as well. You can't underestimate this team, but if you are G2, you should have that confidence. You should be able to believe in what you've shown throughout MSI this year and take those lessons and what you did throughout summer. This is a G2 that I feel can step into this uh, Swiss stage and step in with the swagger of saying, okay, we should make our way out. Let's take care of business so that we do. And this isn't peak form Canyon coming into this event. I think Broken Blade is actually the biggest 
avenue of advantage that G2 has in that top lane matchup. And it's not like Deft and Kellen are exactly world beaters when it comes to the laning phase where Hansama and Mickey. So multiple avenues for G2 to come away with the 1-0 start. There's less avenues to see BDS starting 1-0 against JDG. Okay, Garen, Darius, I don't even think that's enough to be getting any damage to JDG. We talked about it yesterday. The player at this event who is going to be most prepared, even more so than the LEC players that are playing against Adam, I would say it's got to be Mr. 369 in that top side, his buddy Ching Tang, and he was basically LPL. Adam, same type of champion pool, all that preparation, and every single time, 369 is the king, knocking him down, taking no names. This is going to be a JDG victory. There's no way to slice it up. I love, you know, we know, you know us. It's Copium Hopium Central when we're looking for all those angles to find an NA or an EU win. I, I can't see it against a squad as powerful as JDG. We talked about guys, Sheo, Nuke, and Crowny being a little bit inconsistent in the playing stage. You know what happens when you're inconsistent against Kanabi, Knight, and Ruler? You lose the game sub 20 minutes. That's what happens. There's, there's absolutely zero, zero room for, you know, hesitation, mistake, anything like that coming across on a team like JDG performing the way that they are. And I think that this is a very uh, cushioned start for this number one seed from the LPL to get their world's journey started. If you want to get a smile on your face, watch Team Liquid's team reaction to drawing T1 <laughs> because Piosic is just out there cackling knowing he's matching up against Faker and the boys again. That man, I, I went all the way across the ocean to get away from these guys. And we got to get them right out of gate day one. Crazy things. But yeah, it's a fun time watching that reaction video. Piosic saying, hey, God's abandoned us. He's given us T1 right out of the gates. But man, if there's any NA team that is trying to take their angle into the T1 and find that hopium, copium angle of, yes, we can find a win. We talked about it before. Piosic, DRX, Core JJ, Gen G. You throw them in the T1 killers. Maybe they can get a little bit of magic and they've got some reinforcements. This time is the best thing to be looking at. And I'm talking about your man Summit in the top side on that NAR. I think he is going to be an interesting first challenge for Zeus at this event. And this is one of those ones where, again, Zeus has, you know, fluctuated in his performance, was relatively stable when things weren't stable for T1. And he has improved as they rebounded back into form. How are you going to handle a player like Summit, who is an extremely lane dominant player himself? Yeah, you know there's going to be some NAR going on between one of those guys. Uh, and uh, then you throw in guys like APA and Yon, who the ignorance is bliss. Maybe they don't know rookie international performances. They don't have the association of getting destroyed by T1 and other Korean teams. So maybe that's uh, the angle for them. C9 and Mad Lions are both familiar with that NA versus EU rivalry. As is tradition at these international events, it's always the first EU NA matchup where the trash talk is the loudest. <laughs> yeah, and I love it. Bring it on to both sides. This is the very best that we got because you know what? Both of these teams should sure have reasons to be confident, to have that hopium about their team and what they can do, what type of damage they can deal to each other, and then what it means to come away from this NA versus EU matchup with that one to nothing score already in your favor, giving you that big boost into this event. And if you're on the NA side, you get this. You slide in an NRG win against Weibo. Oh man, we're talking about an NA versus NA matchup in the second part of the Swiss stage, which means a 2 0 NA Guaranteed. squad. Woo. Yes, sir. And I think no matter how you slice it up, you got to be taking that one as the number one ticket for NA. Problem is, then you have to have two NA teams win that first round. And I think Cloud9 <laughs> are favorites against Mad Lions, but I'm talking 52 48. You know, it's still a very close, almost toss-up matchup blg kt probably the least talked about matchup here and i've seen you know a lot of people's pickums. these are the two teams at the top that people have for potentially choking and not making it to top eight and i think that this is going to be a very you know telling match right out of the gate not to say that there can't be any turnaround or rebound all these type of things but i do think that both of these teams the blg kt 
are on that outside looking in when everyone is evaluating all the different LPL, LCK teams, and then you realize, well, okay, well, you got all that. At some point, mathematically, with the Swiss stage, it's really likely that there's going to be a Western team included in that top eight. So there's got to be one of those LPL, one of those LCK squads dropping out. It seems to be a lot of people identifying BLG or KT. I think this first matchup is going to be key to see their performances, and especially in that top lane. Giga bin for BLG alongside the King Keen up there for KT Rolster. That's going to be a big tell on how strong these teams are playing is the performances of their top laners. Last matchup of day one, Fnatic LNG. And let me tell you, if Razork and Humanoid aren't bringing it, if they have a coin flip bad day, this is going to be an absolute massacre because Tarzan and Scout, they don't have off days. They only have slightly less good days. I think if this was one of those situations where we were in the worlds of old and we had the full schedule and maybe this was, you know, a bit later into the group stage scheduling, you could find a way to be okay. Maybe you don't need the 11 out of 10 performance. You can figure out this thing. You can attack in this type of way. You can get that advantage and you can look for that upset against LNG. I think right out of the gates right now, the inexperience, the question marks that are still going to be there for a Fnatic team that doesn't have quite as much track track room and consistency to prove the way that LNG does this year, you have to be siding with LNG and, and view it as a pretty monumental task for Fnatic to be perfect against them in game one. So that's just day one action. You know, we look at pickups where people you've got your top eight you're picking, most likely to go three and zero. And when you look at what Mark and I have put in, the most likely three and O squads, I think we kind of took the easy angle. Mark Going with JDG, I went with T1 because historically, T1, even if they fall later in the World Championship, the best of one stage is always where they look the best. That is true about T1. They have that consistency. They always show up and every time they're showing into these international events, even if they do drop one here or there type of thing. You know, you know, curiously, they do find that rebound absolutely is something to look into. History of T1. I'm signing with JDG. It's boring. It's easy. It's got to be the answer, though. Seeing how good they were this year, the form that they are going to carry into this event. We're talking about a team that over 80 days ago locked up their world spot. LPL Summer Split, 69 days. They've been in there longer than the Summer Split. Yeah, I mean, most of these squads, the LPL finals were August 5th, Mark. August 5th. We're to getting towards the end of October. It's over two months since we've even seen JDG play. So, yes, there is an angle where you say, oh, maybe, maybe you can put a little bit of doubt into there. But it's about a 1% when you're looking at 99% confidence in what this JDG team has put out there on the Rift and what they're about to put out on the Rift at here at Worlds. Especially when T1 and JDG both getting kind of soft, easier starts to this event. No offense, Team Liquid and Team BDS. <laughs> then we get to the top eight, and obviously, you and I have a handful of similarities. T1, Gen G, JDG, LNG, the easy routine ones, but you got to break it up eventually. You can't just have four LPL, four LCK teams, because that's no fun. So where we differ, we both got G2 being that Western hope getting through you got kt falling behind and not living up to hype i got blg being the same which kind of speaks to that first round matchup i think kt's winning that but again kt and blg are the top teams that people are not putting through top eight that's where it comes down to i've, I've got blg coming away with that win against kt is the way that it slices up and that's enough of that difference maker between those two teams that are gonna i think be in that contention, I think the questions for a lot of people are, is BLG actually a squad that maybe they've kind of slipped up and, you know, leveled down a little bit from when they were at that very peak right alongside a JDG and just not able to a vault over top of them? And then for KT, you're going to have people that are like myself that are looking at some of those failures in this LCK playoff run, the, you know, these times where they didn't get it done in these crucial game five moments against their long disrival in T1 in Faker in the mid lane and thinking that, yeah, well, maybe we're going to see some of those issues. Maybe we're going to see some of those falters that you saw in those series in this Swiss stage where, again, if you're counting on BLG getting that first win against them, you don't have a lot of other space to make that falter and still get yourself 
into that knockout stage after this. For me, it's as simple as that. That's the way that one's going to fall out. And yes, G2 is that representative for the West. They're going to make their way through and hopefully continue some damage, even though uh, the expectations may be not so high. They still have the highest potential out of the West to have a dream top four finish. I don't think anyone would argue that. For the KT BLG side of things, for me, at least KT had a positive end in the gauntlet where they got to win to qualify. BLG just fully slumped their way in. And then you had some of the players on that Asian Games uh, roster in China that didn't perform super well. So I'm very hesitant about BLG. It feels like the KT hype has died so quickly. I don't think people even remember that they were 17-1 and one in the regular season. So expectations have dropped off for them, which if you're a KT fan, we know. That's a very good thing to not be having <laughs> big expectations. It's perfect storm for KT at that type of point. But yeah, it is important to remember the type of consistency and success that we did see throughout that summer split before that playoff picture. And things are a little bit more complicated when you're talking about that, of course. But yes, this is one of those ones where I don't think anyone should be surprised if we do see KT show some of that force through this Swiss stage and really kind of prove themselves as, hey, we do belong in this picture of a top eight. And you do need to consider us when you're thinking about how you're going to move on to the next round in that situation. They've got the threats. BDD turning back the clock because playing pretty darn good in the jungle. And of course, aiming in the hands down in the bottom lane. If they've got that synergy in sync, they're a top tier bot lane duo. Biggest other difference in our lists. And it's a big difference. It's, I understand that this is delusional, but I have NRG winning. That first matchup against Weibo, carrying that momentum. I know it's blasphemous to even utter the name LCS in a top eight position, but this NRG team, it just feels different. They got the mantra coming in. Why not us? Why not us? After the incredible run through playoffs, I just feel like there's a different aura around this NRG squad. They look primed and ready for a 3-0 sweep in the quarterfinals where they get stomped. But at least they're getting to quarterfinals. I'd love to see NRG make their way into that position. Be a great story, of course. A lot of things with the LCS needing some great stories would be a wonderful thing. Of course, I think the big thing that I, I want to look at with this NRG team that a lot of people, I think, are missing or undervaluing is, of course, a little bit of that experience that this roster is carrying in. Sure, you've got some green. Sure, you've got players like Palafox. You're looking, of course, at Dokla as well. Not the, the biggest experience on the international stage, but you're still got players like Contracts returning to world situation, getting back into that type of mojo, can recall on you know how he was earlier in his career and compare it to where he is now in maturity at this point in his career and how to manage the emotions and situations that will come on you with Worlds and how to help your teammates with that as well. FBI in the bottom lane is one of those ones alongside Igna that we got to be checking in on because, of course, got some world's experience. Last he's time been we smashed really by Ruler before, so he's been in the training grounds. But we also got to remember your boy smashed Viper on the international stage it was something we got to be looking at. That was also soon to be world champion viper on the international stage i might add to you so i do think that there is an angle where this is not just the craziest of hopium copium dreams i've made a couple of whoopsies in my predictions i gotta go for some safe answers here so that's why i ain't going for that one but i do so fully support the angle of that na pride and see an nrg make the miracle run to push on through it all starts against weibo on that opening day of matches so when you look ahead into your crystal ball for how Worlds 2023 pl plays out, how do we get close to matching the script, the storyline that Deft and DRX had last year? Is it BLG finally taking down the Titans of JDG? Is it Pays taking down Ruler who he replaced? Is it just the golden road for JDG? The only one that's close to me to reaching the DRX one is the Redemption for T1 and doing it in a fashion where they get revenge against almost every team they've lost against going back to 2022. You got Piosic on TL, Deft on D+, Chobi on Gen.G, Xiaohu on Weibo even, and then just JDG as a whole from MSI. If they take down all these squads that have got them in these finals losing streaks, I think people will be very happy with that script. 
I mean, T1's just got to channel that Halloween energy early. Get that exorcist going on, taking out their past demons all the way through different eras of the team, different eras of careers, all those things. They're lined up just perfect for this team to make that full redemption road. Yes, it would be phenomenal. Yes, that is probably the only thing. And I think you slam in a bit of the Asian Games gold medal for Faker on top of that one is the way you get to that ticket of being at a comparable level or try to push up to the level of the miracle story that was DRX last year. But I will throw one little hopium copium in there. A Western squad making it on through. And I'm not going to go crazy and saying all the way through big dance. We're going to finals again or even the big dream of winning it all. I'll settle for a semifinals appearance and a semifinals where you're not getting 3-0. That's, that's the other requirement that we got to be booking on. I mean, let's be honest. Making it to semifinals and having a competitive semifinal is basically winning worlds for a Western team, right? Yeah. For, that's that, what the goal what should be. be. And for a team right now, like G2... I don't think that's without the realm of dreams, of possibility right now and what you're looking for yourself, even staying, you know, staying humble and staying understanding that you got to take care of every battle on your way. This is a team. This is a year that we could be seeing something like that happen. And I know we all want to heart back to the last international event at MSI where the LPL was leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else. But when you're talking about Gen G, G2, even Cloud9, well, less so Cloud9. Let's go Gen G and G2. The level up that they have had from the level that they were at at MSI is 16 tiers higher. So don't be thinking it's those same two rosters that are going to be showing up against the LPL at this event. And the, those rosters have leveled up, absolutely, is the other thing to look at. And then, yes, we've got actually somewhat of a shakeup in the meta, in what is the current play sure. and what can be played to try and take advantage, take things to different levels, unlock new, new paths, all these type of things out there on the rift is something you got to be playing into attention and looking at how we've built up to this point in the year things are going to be different no question about it to me on what we're going to see out there on the rift compared to msi earlier this year or even compared to the summer finals because again it was two months ago we got multiple patches since we've even seen any of these teams play but that is it today for league unlock eric and mark here with you beautiful people thank you so much for watching as always and we'll catch you on that flippity flip